Sizzling 16, of course, is a Stephanie Plum novel. It's about a female bounty hunter in Trenton, New Jersey. She works for her bail bondsman cousin, Vinny. And um, in this book, Vinny has been snatched. Vinny ran up a big gambling debt. Um, Vinny was not a good guy, and he put a lot of uh, people in jeopardy, and the bad guys have him. And it turns out that um, Vinny is such a scumbag, nobody wants to bail him out. His father-in-law refuses to fork out the money. Um, there's no money left at the bonds office. Nobody has money to bail Vinny out. So it's left to Stephanie to actually find him and rescue him. And she does this with uh, Connie, who is the office manager, and her pal Lula, who was a former hoe, uh, and is now working at the office. And once in a while, Grandma Mazer, who is one of my favorite characters in the series, Grandma Mazer comes in too. But um, they, but basically, they have to find Vinny and rescue him. Uh, they're helped a little bit by Ranger, who's one of the hot guys in the series. Joe Morelli, who is a Trenton cop, helps out a little bit too. And um, and then and then there are the Hobbits. But I won't tell you about the Hobbits. You have to read about the Hobbits. What will shock my readers the most about Sizzling Sixteen? Uh, I'm not sure you can shock my readers anymore. They've been with me for 16 books. I think um, there's very little that can shock and surprise them anymore. I think the really different thing about this book is Stephanie. I feel like I um, got to know a little bit more about Stephanie. I actually went out of the world of Plum uh, for a while. And before I wrote Sizzling 16, I wrote Wicked Appetite. This book is going to be out in September. It features Diesel, um, and it, it features a new heroine. Her name is Lizzie Tucker. And going into the head of Lizzie Tucker, and then coming back into Stephanie was just a very broadening experience. And there was something about going out of the world of Plum um, and um, getting into the head of Lizzie Tucker, the new heroine, and then coming back and seeing Stephanie um, with a fresh eye. I think it really added something to this particular book. I was first inspired to write Stephanie Plum by the movie Midnight Run. It starred Charles, Charles Grodin and Robert De Niro. And it was about a bounty hunter uh, and a bail bondsman. And I didn't even know they existed. Um, I knew nothing about it at all, but I was intrigued by this. I was writing romance at the time, and I knew that sooner or later I was going to get kicked out of romance because um, I loved the characters in romance. I loved the readers. I was not great at all those complicated, you know, sex scenes. Like he put his hand there, and she thought this, and I just I wasn't great at that. So, um, not that this says anything about my personal sex life, but you know, there it is. Anyway, I decided that I was going to go into crime fiction, and I saw this movie, and I thought um, this was a pretty cool thing. This was before the time of Dog, and uh, we weren't seeing a lot of bounty hunters in the media, um, and it just suited my purposes. So I went out and I learned how to shoot a gun, and I visited some um, bail bonds offices. I decided that I would set it in Trenton. I, I knew that this was going to be a commitment for me. I was hoping I was going to stay with this series for a long time, and I wanted to go home with it. Uh, I'm a Jersey girl, but I grew up in South River, which is a little bit um, too small to have a lot of realistic crime. But I thought Trenton was good, you know, because it's by the Delaware River. You could dump bodies into it, and um, it seemed very urban and cosmopolitan to me. Uh, and my parents were living in Mercerville, which is just on the outskirts. So I had uh, an opportunity to do a lot of good research in Trenton. I went to the police department and uh, met a bunch of great guys, started hanging out with the cops. One of the first cops that I hung out with was Joe Juniak. I was in Trenton all day yesterday hanging out with Joe, and uh, he's captain now. And when I first met Joe, he was in uniform. We've been together ever since. He's a, a huge source of information for me, and, um, and he's a lot of fun in a bar, too. Stephanie is coming to the big screen. She's being played by Katherine Heigl. Yay, Katherine Heigl. I love Katherine Heigl. Um, I saw 27 dresses 28 times. And so I'm, I'm very excited. I think it's going to be a fabulous movie. I think they're doing an amazing, they're going to do an amazing job with it. And they start filming in July. They're going to be filming in Pittsburgh, um, which they tell me looks a lot like Trenton, and I believe that. Um, so, yeah, so it's finally happening. We're going to have a plum movie. 
interaction with my fans is really critical for me. When I first started writing, maybe, um, you know, that was before we had a website. And um, it was much more difficult to get in touch with me. I would get a few letters once in a while, snail mail. Remember that? <laughs> Whatever happened to that? Um, now, we, we just hear from hundreds of thousands of people all the time. And so we know what they love about the books, and we know what they're not so crazy about the books. Uh, we know where they live. We know who they are. It's like a big, huge, extended family. It's worldwide. I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing. And this is why I write, you know, because I love the idea of entertaining. I love, I think as writers, we're, we're communicators. We, uh, you know, and it's not enough just to have our little family love us. I mean, we have to have everybody love us. We have to have the whole world love us. And, uh, and we have to be able to talk to these people. And this is what the internet allows us to do. We have a name of the book contest every year. I think we started it, I don't know, maybe book three or four. I mean, it's been going on forever. And the reason we started it is because I really suck at titles. I, I mean, I just, I do not have the title chromosome. I wasn't born with that ability. Nobody in my family has it. it titles are hard. They are really difficult. So we decided um, that our fans actually were smarter than we were and more creative when it came to titles. And we started opening it up. And um, if you win the contest, you get your name in the book. Um, thanks to, you know, for uh, suggesting this name. And we have um, hundreds of thousands of entries every year in that title contest. And I have staff, um, well actually it's my family, let's be honest about this. You know, my daughter, my son, my husband, myself, we all get together, we go through all of the names uh, that are suggested and we boil it down to a little short list. And then we send it on to my, um, my publisher, my fabulous editor, Jen Enderlin, helps out with this. And, uh, and then we all argue over it because we can never decide on a name. You know, we, out of 10 names, 10 people will all have their own favorite. Um, but somehow we managed to come to a name. And, and then we throw um, everybody who, who suggested that name, because usually there are hundreds, into a big spaghetti pot. And my daughter picks one out. And that's how we get the winner. A lot of speculation every year that the Plum series is going to end. Every year, my readers are sure that's the last book I'm ever going to write. But, you know, as you can see, here I am. And uh, I come back, you know, like a bad penny every year with another plum. And I can't imagine not doing plums. I mean, I hope that I have, um, I do plums till the day I die. I mean, someday I'm just going to clunk over at my desk. And, um, and then they'll probably find, you know, manuscripts um, that I've hidden away under my underwear drawer. So uh, I, I expect that I'll be doing plums for a long time. I have a new series starting um, that I mentioned earlier, Wicked Appetite. It's starring a very special guy named Diesel and a pastry chef named Lizzie Tucker, and it's set in Salem, Massachusetts. And it's, um, it's a little odd. It's a little off the normal in a good way. But I think it has the same entertainment value as Plum. I think my readers are going to really um, love it. What's compelling about Stephanie is probably that she's very ordinary. I, there's a lot of me in Stephanie. I think I'm a really average person. She's very identifiable. Um, she's very accessible. She gets herself into all of these ridiculous situations, and she has a job that's not normal. I think she's just somebody that we can all see ourselves walking in Stephanie's shoes.